concerns you have and family members know about it. Some concerns you voice to a lot of people, they know about it. So we all have concerns that we need to uh, guard our heart for out of our heart comes the issues of life. Many of you are struggling with things in your own life now of decisions that you made a year ago, five years ago, ten years ago, or maybe even longer. And you know you can't change it. Okay? I want to start, here's where I really want to start tonight. Don't beat yourself up for mistakes of the past. You can't undo it. But learn from those things so you don't replicate it. Because the life that's ahead of you now, I'm telling you, the life that's ahead of you now is so powerful, so glorious, so alive. Uh, Sunday we were talking about a life worth living. You know, and there, there is a place that we give our lives to Christ, and Christ gives us a piece of joy that the world can't give. And, and, and you're not, you're not going to get that peace through drugs. You're not going to get it through alcohol. You're not going to get it through uh, relationships. We, we're always looking for peace and happiness in the wrong places. Okay? And the truth is, and, and tonight and, and, and subsequent nights we'll talk about that, that peace is only found in Christ. Okay? Uh, for every week I'm, I'm talking about, you know, you need to be concerned with you. Don't be concerned with anybody else. My, my, my job here is, 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 is not to straighten you out. Yeah, I got enough problems with me. Okay? Working on myself is 24-7. You know, and I'm a whole lot further than I used to be. But I'm, I'm glad that I, I got a sense of direction and I really know where I'm going. Someone said to me just yesterday, and, I, and, my, my, and my, my response was, uh, I'm, I'm living the dream. There, there have been times that <laughs> my life was, had a lot of nightmares. Life was hard. Relationships were hard. Just talking to people was hard. And I found out it wasn't so much people on the outside the hardness and the, and the difficulties really wasn't coming from the outside. It was coming from my own mental, my, my own physical, my own spiritual things that I had brought on myself. And uh, so the Lord said, I just need to start addressing some man's concerns. Last week, just to give you a uh, uh, backup, last week we talked about four things. I, and I, it was in the A's, and it was abiding in Christ. Afflictions, anger, and answered prayer. For you that are taking some fresh notes, I'll go give those four again. We talked about what it means to abide in Christ. And I think last week I, I told you that word abide means to uh, establish a permanent, permanent residence in Christ. You're living there, you're dwelling there, that's who I am. If if, if, you, if you're ever looking for me, if you're ever looking for me, that's where I live. Okay? So God, wa God wants you to learn to abide in Christ. People that, people that go to church, and I mean, they're, they're, they're in and they're out. They're, you know, some, some days things are good and some days things are not good. And it's just, they're just flip-flopping. They're flip-flopping in their walk with Christ. They're not abiding in Christ. There's a place that, that we just abide. Uh, inviting people to the house of God for myself, that's just, that's just a normal routine. And, and, and I really appreciate what Selena just said. All she said was, thank you for inviting me. Do you know you got neighbors and friends? Some of them are just waiting for the invitation. Matter of fact, the majority of people that have come to Christ, they came because someone invited them. Not beat them up with scripture. Not, 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 not to pr pretend to be so ultra spiritual. Just an invitation. Jesus said, come unto me all you that labor heavy labor and I will give you rest. That was an invitation. We find that um, Andrew came to Jesus and the very first thing, he, he ran and he got his brother and he invited him. Okay? Something important about the invitation. 
So, you know, um, our friends, S Selena and Susan, they're here tonight because they were invited. Abiding in Christ. And then we talk about afflictions. One scripture says, uh, affliction may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. There's not a person in this room that's going to get away from afflictions. They're mental, they're spiritual, they're physical. So it's, it's just Sometimes you, you, you do things, and you just kind of hurt things in, in, in your body. Uh, some, is, uh, some of it is, is a growth thing. Afflictions happen, okay? But, one, but one, one thing I want to assure you, that God will get us to grow through the affliction. You know, as, and as I was talking with, with even Ron ton, tonight, we have a, 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 a mutual friend that's kind of going through a tough time. He lost his wife about two years ago, and he's, he, he's still caught up in the, in, in the pain of that. And he's, he's a very dear friend of mine. And have I ever told him, I understand because I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Okay, because by the, I thank God I am not in that situation. But Ron understands that. And he said something that was so important. And the reason I'm saying this, Ron, because it not, not, again, not just for Chick, but for others that hear this. He said, that's a situation that you have got to, how'd you put it? I want to say it right. It's not something that you get over it's something that you get through. Huh? I, I, I really appreciate that word tonight because, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say to anybody here that you're going through something right now that get over it. But I do want to tell you, get through it. Huh? Yeah. If, I tell you what, if you're going through it, go through it. The, 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 the aches and the pains and the suffering, the memories, all those stuff are still there. And they, in and and this life, they will never go away. But God will give you grace to get through it. You know, my wife and I were talking with another lady today, and of course, somehow, with the subject of my my dad and sister being murdered um, a year ago, and she looks and she says, oh, "I can't even I can't even fathom that. Neither could I." And people have said to me over the years, or this past year, Pastor, how how do you deal with that? It, it wasn't the fact that. I got over it, but God's grace has got me through it. Amen? Okay, that, that was some of the stuff we talked about last week. Biden, Christ, afflictions, anger, okay? Anger within itself is not bad. Matter of fact, the Bible tells you, be angry, but sin not. So we need to understand what anger is and how, and, and, and how useful anger can be. Okay, God never expects you to get angry and go out and hurt someone and do something to violate and or do violence to yourself. Don't let that you know happen. You know, I I I I, I, I talk to so many uh, well people, but so many young people, they 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 got mad about something and so they, therefore they take their fist and they bust something up. What they busted up didn't didn't hurt what got busted up, but it hurt them because they had turned around and then they they had turned and took their money and paid for it. Makes, you know, so really, that anger hurt themselves, okay? So understand, it's okay to be a, yeah, I am angry about abortion. I'm angry about that. But I'm not going to go blow up an abortion clinic, okay? So we understand what, what anger is, okay? Unanswered, uh, uh, excuse me, not unanswered, but answered prayer. God wants to answer every prayer. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's hold on. Sometimes it's wait. Sometimes it's be still. Okay? Matter of fact, I know this because over the years, I've, I've preached the word and people have come and said, Pastor, you know, this week I was praying about that and I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have an answer for it, but your word this morning gave me an answer to that. God always answers prayer. Tonight I want to talk about the bees and the seas. Okay? Number one, the B, the breath of God. The breath of God. If someone would read uh, out loud, please, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Who wants to find that for me? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Who wants to find that for me? 
certainly people, come on, I need some responses here. I'll read it myself then. Thank you, thank you, Diego. Second Timothy that chapter three, verse sixteen. Is that three sixteen? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That word inspiration means to inspire, which means to breathe. In the Old Testament, it comes from the word ruach, the breath of God. So when you read scripture, when you read in the Bible, you need to know that that is the breath of God. Each one of you are alive because of the breath of God. If God decides for one moment to withhold his breath from you, you no longer exist. Okay? So we need to understand the breath of God. Yeah, and throughout Scripture we find that, and God breathed. Even in the upper room, it was a, uh, the breath of God shot, shot through there like a rushing mighty wind and filled the place where they were sitting, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. It's a breathe. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a breath. Uh, you don't see it. You don't know where it comes from. You know, I go out in my yard just about every day, and, and I look at uh, my American flag out there, and, yeah, and, I mean, that thing's just blowing real good. And my response to Dorothy all the time is, boy, our batteries are working really good today, <laughs> you know. And I realize, yeah, of course it's not that. What it is, it's wind. Okay, here's what I want to submit to you before we go to the other one. Everybody look at me. God will breathe on your situation. If you let them. You quit trying to figure it out here. I, I told someone just today, people trying to figure out how to straighten things up. Dude, the person that made the mess really can't clean it up. So we've made a mess, some of us. We've made a mess in our lives. Ten years ago, bad re thing, things that thing, we, we just did it and it can't be undone. But the one who person who can straighten that out is God. Amen. Man, God can straighten this out. Yeah, I remember of a a man, he's he's gone now, but and his name was Roy. And Roy was doing heroin. Three uh excuse me, two hundred and fifty dollars a day while he was in prison. He 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 was the he was the main chef for this prison. So he was the one responsible for buying all the food for that prison. So he was getting extra food, was reselling it out the day, uh, out the door, and he kept his habit going until the money dried up. He had no way to fix his habit. And Roy said that he found himself one day in the corner of his prison cell in a fetal position, just shaking so bad that his teeth were rattling. He cried out to God. He says, I've messed my life up. God, if you will deliver me, I'll never go back to that lifestyle again. And whenever I get out of here, I'll preach the gospel. That day, the Spirit of God came into that cell room, delivered the man. Years later, he got out of prison. What did he do? He went straight into the gospel to touch other drug addicts, other with the goodness of God. The breath of God. You don't have a situation that's so difficult that the creator, God, cannot straighten it out. Your life is just so twisted up with knots. And God can come and straighten it all out. And that's what he wants to do. God finds his God finds his best clay underneath the bridge. There are homeless people right here in Paso Robles that can out sing you. They can out preach you. They can play they can play instruments. 
they're a better artist than you. They're, they're so gifted and so talented, but something has happened in their life. Now they're estranged from God, and God is not, God is not judging them. God is drawing them by his grace. But what he, did, he takes people like me and you, takes people like us, and start loving what he loves, God's breath. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Number two, I want to talk about the beauty of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Who has that one? Somebody? I got some visitors here tonight, you know, and <laughs> you guys are embarrassing me. All right, all right. Okay, then I need someone to find Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Who, who's going to find that one? Thank you, Donovan. Okay, I'll come back to it. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Somebody else? Thank you, Linda. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. Miss Melly, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. And the last one is going to be Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Okay, so we talked about the breath of God. The second we're talking about Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Nice and loud. God makes everything beautiful in his time. God does not function on my time zone. Okay? We are a very impatient person. We want everything now. I mean, how, how, how many of time you stand before the microwave because it's not moving fast enough? Yeah. You know, I, I remember just a few years ago, you know, uh, when we were out in, cause we live out in the country, we had dial up, and you know, and, and we sit there, what? <laughs> you know, and that was horrible. Then we got DSL. Man, felt like we were in heaven. DSL is so slow right now because we want everything now. You know, I, I, I talk about you know, the, the world that we live in now, you know, I, and I back, back when my, my parents first got married, that they would go out and they would buy a house for $12,000, and it was a fixer up it, and they would fix it up and keep it for a few years, and then they would sell it, and then they would buy another house for $30,000 and fix it up, and that's just how they did things, you know, um, but, not, but not now. We, 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 we uh, and, and I must say young kids, but it's not just young kids, but we got these young couples that are getting married and they want to go out and buy a million dollar house. And they don't have a million dollar salary. You know? Uh, they don't want to go out and buy an old beater car. You know? Uh, they they want to go out and buy, give themselves Mercedes. They want to get themselves a BMW. And I'm not, and I'm not knocking those things. Those, those are wonderful, but I'll tell you what, you know? God, that's right. God makes everything beautiful in his time. You know, I look at, I, I, I look at maturity. Okay. Everybody look at Miss Mary. No. You probably were still beautiful when you were younger. But look at you now. You, huh? Say it. <laughs> a gorgeous piece of work. God makes everything beautiful in his time. Man. Sally walks in on Sunday, new haircut. Man, I thought we had a new woman in church. Look at her. Why? God makes everything beautiful in his time. Amen. See, the, 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 the problem with beauty, most of us, Establish beauty out of looking at our carnal eyes. Sure. Beauty happens not on the outside but on the inside. 
You know, I was I was listening to, and I'll just tell you, it was Tucker Carlson. He uh, some time ago he was talking about understand the beauty in architect, and he and he he took you back to the to the early 1900s and saw the buildings that were made and the houses that were made. Many of them are still standing, and they're beautiful. Matter of fact, my my aunt is she's 85, I think she is. She's still living in the same house that she lived in when she was a little girl. Buffalo, New York, still a gorgeous home. I mean, huge wooden stair staircases, beautiful doors, and, you know, it was a thing of beauty. And those things last. Those things would last a long time. But the truth is, look at, for the most part, what we're building now, track homes. They all look the same. Most of it built with cheap lumber. Sure, we can paint it up and we can make it look good on the outside, but it, it has lost a quality of beauty. Of beauty. God makes everything beautiful in his time. Beauty has character. Beauty has a lot of integrity. Beauty is honorable. You know, when I when I bug Selita, I'm, I'm, you bless me tonight. Because the last thing she said before we got out the door, she says, "I'll see you on Wednesday." I'll tell you what I what I I'm gonna confess. Walk down, yeah, right. Not, not, not because of you, but probably because of the hundreds and thousands that have told me the same story. So therefore, my expectation was low. And I turned around and I said to Susan, you birthed the girl with integrity or something like that, a woman of her word. You know what that means? That means that's a, be that's a beautiful thing. Amen. It's a character. So... So mama is instilling a character in her daughter. Okay? God makes everything beautiful in his time. Number three, belief in God. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Who's that? Nice and loud. The Philippian jailer. calls out to the apostles. Matter of fact, his life had hit rock bottom. He's getting ready to take his own life because these prisoners had escaped. And the prisoners said, don't touch yourself. Don't, 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 don't do yourself damage. damage. We're still here. And he was, so, he was so blessed by sin that the prisoners not escaped. And, and he's, here's the question. He said, okay, what must I do to be saved? You got to do something. You got to do something. If, well, you got to cry out to God because the answer was here. And it really, it was simple. He didn't say you need to go join a church. He didn't say call the preacher over. He didn't say we got all these things that we got to do. He didn't say to go to a Bible class. He didn't say you know you need to go through through six weeks of uh, catechism and everything else. He they gave him a, a simple answer: believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And not only you but your wife and your kids as well, your household. And we find that the man repented, gave his heart to Christ, and God was what he said. Believe. That word believe is a verb, okay? It means be believing now. You don't believe one time, well, I, I, I met Jesus at the altar one time, and I'm good, and I'm, now I'm going to live like the devil. No, it's a continual state. It's a continual state. Okay? It's, 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 I talked about this the past week. It's learning how to stay in that slot. Quit stepping out and coming back in. Just, just stay in that slot. You know, this afternoon we had to do some uh, stuff at DMV. And there was a little boy 
that was standing by these doors that was when he gets when he gets close the doors were just open you know and all of a sudden he got it that was he, he was having he was having a, a fun time he'd go up to the door the door would open then he would get away from it door would close he would go and just but i kind of thought about that i, I that's that's what this be believing is it's it's finding who God is and stay in the slot. Quit, quit running out and quit running in and quit running out and quit running in. Get consistent. H have, have a continual, have a continual walk with God. Everybody say, stay there. Stay there. Stay there. I was talking with a from Arizona yesterday from Arizona and she said Bishop she says you and Dorothy have been in pastor rules for a long time haven't you I said yes yeah. she, says, she says I'm really proud of you why because so many preachers they don't do that I said as far as I'm concerned as of right now this is the field that God has put us in and I'm not done working the field so many people, you want God to do something else for you over here when you have not completed this. Stay in it. Sometimes it's hard, but you stay in it. Sometimes you want to quit, but you stay in it. You know how many times I've wanted to quit preaching? Every Monday morning. <laughs> I just, I'm done. You know, and that, and that lasts about a minute because I'm not done. And that's, that, was just, that was just a blast of emotion. But yeah, you know, but for me, can't quit. Can't quit. Boxer James Corbett said, fight one more round. When you stand before your opponent and he give you black eyes, Fight one more round. When your nose is broken, you're bleeding, fight one more round. When you're just so tired that you can barely pick your hands up and put on guard, fight one more round. Because the man who fights one more round is never whipped. Some of you need, some of, some of you need to learn to quit quitting. Believe what God says is true, and that's it. Believe in God. Number four. Three, I'm going to give you three C's. Christ's love. Are we on the C's now? Yes, we're on the C's now. Number four, Christ's love. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. And read the next one, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What shall separate from me from the love of God? Everybody look at me. There is nothing that's going to separate, separate you from God's love. God loves atheists. God loves Satan worshipers. God says, I'm not willing that any should perish. Okay. So God is always extending his love. But there's something, there's something that we need to do about it. There's something that we need to do about it. Okay? We need to respond to God's love. I do what I do for the past 52 years because I like what I do. It's fulfilling to me. Because I found my slot, I found my call. Okay. God loved you while we were still sinners. When you were in your worst state, God was going to demonstrate his love to you. Satan wanted to take you out. Satan wanted to bring destruction to you and to your home and steal everything that you got. But God says, I'm not going to let that happen. 
and he spared your life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It doesn't say for God so loved the church. It doesn't say God for God so loved religious people. God said, for God so loved the world, the, the, the world, the people that are at enmity against God, God says, I'm still going to show them my love and my grace. It's the love of God, it's the goodness of God that brings repentance. That we finally come to a place and we start saying, you know what, I'm really tired of living my life the way I live my life. I want to respond to God's love. What shall separate me from the love of God? Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Now, with that, just because God loves you don't mean everybody's going to heaven. Okay? We need to respond to God's love. Romans says, with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made into salvation. That we've got to come to a place that we realize God's love. And I need to come to a place and realize, I'm a sinner. I have need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I want to be born again. I want to do what the Philippian jail, jailer said. What must I do to be saved? It doesn't say, what must I think? It doesn't say anything. What must I do? There's something we've got to do. We've got to respond to the love of Christ. And I'll tell you, when you do, life becomes a trip. Life is, I'm telling you, life is fun. I was talking to someone just the other day. He said, oh, Pastor, you serving God is just so hard. Yeah. You must be serving a different God. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it is not that we don't go through hard times. There have been times that I've gone through, but serving God wasn't what was hard. My reaction, my responding to certain things is what made things hard. God didn't make things hard. God says, come unto me all you labor and have labor, and I'll give you yokes. He says, let's exchange yokes. My yoke is easy. Yours is hard. My yoke, my yoke isn't heavy. Yours is heavy. He says, my yoke is light. Now it's... God's love is gentle. Number five, contentment. First Peter chapter six, verse six through eight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. First, I got First Timothy chapter six, verse six through eight. I'm not, you got the right one. Godliness with contentment is great gain. If you are a godly man or a godly woman, then you need to quit complaining about what you have or don't have. I found that I serve a God that when I am grateful for what I have, I'm making room for God to give me more. Someone said to me a time ago, you know, Pastor, we, what we knew, we, we need to get we, the church, we need to get a church bus. So my response was, is your car full every Sunday? They're complaining about what we don't have, but they're not trying to fill up what they do have. Can you imagine what our car would look like, uh, what our church would look like if we filled our car every week with our neighbors that wanted to ride the church? Then we're going to be content. It's not that I. It's not that I don't want more, but I'm content of what I have. I'm going to enjoy what I have. Could things be better? I guess they could, but I'm not worried about it. You know why? Because I am blessed. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Glory to God. And what I don't have, if I need it, I know where it's at. So I tap into God. 
So my wife and I, we, we stop, and, you know, that's something we need to pray about. You know, and the Lord says, okay, you know, he may say, let's, let's go ahead. I had my gold wing motorcycle for 15 years. And one day the Lord told me to give it away. In the natural, that was one of the, one of the worst things I had to do, was give away my motorcycle. Because the Lord said give it away. Um, <laughs> they found me. I'm not being facetious. I, I actually, I was going through a period, I don't know why, my, 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 my legs were hurting, my knees were hurting, it was such a big bike, and, and for 15 years I'm getting way over this thing, and I said, okay, I, I'm going to sell it. So I put it up for sale. And after it was put up for sale, almost the next day I got a, a guy from, um, from uh, Nevada called me, and he said he wanted my bike. He saw it online. He really wanted his dad, who's a preacher. And uh, he said, I'll get a ticket. I'll fly over to San Luis Obispo uh, tomorrow, and I'll pick it up. Fantastic. I am As soon as I got the phone, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, I never told you to sell it. Well, Lord, you could have told me this before I had this guy, you know. And the Lord said, no, I, I'm not going to sell it. You're going to give it. What do you mean I'm, I'm going to give it? <laughs> well, the man, come, I picked him up the at the airport and bring him back here to Paso and he was going to leave the next day and I said to him, I said, uh, I, I, bad news, I can't sell the bike. He looked at me like, I'll get a ticket and I'll fly back. And no, you're not going to fly back. The Lord said, give you the bike. Because everybody looked at me because I realized the bike really wasn't mine. I rode it for 15 years, but it was the Lord's. Amen? Yeah. It was the Lord's. I knew that. So I signed it over and got rid of it. So for four years, I didn't have a motorcycle, which was fine. I wanted one, and all of a sudden, something else rolled around, and, and I kind of, kind of, and what I got now, I, as much as I like my gold wing, I like it like even, even better. But here, here, here was my point. I'm understanding contentment. Contentment is, is when you got something and you're satisfied with it, but you realize that it is not yours. It has been loaned to us. My three children, they are not mine. They're God's. My 20 grandchildren, they are not mine. They're God's. They've been loaned to us for a moment. Glory. As a shepherd, you are not mine. God has loaned you to me for a minute. I am not yours. I'm, I, I, I am a gift that God's given you. So what I'm, I'm, I'm learning to be content with what God has given us. God says, be still and know that I am God. Huh? My granddaughter Rima just stepped out for a minute, but when she was, when that girl was little, man, she could not be still. Am I right there? Still that, way. still that way. You know, we put her in her chair, sit right there. But Papa, and she gets up and she's arms are just flailing and everything. Else, and we just had to train her when we come to the house. No, you're not gonna get up. You're gonna sit still. Sometimes, sometimes. God, God loves you so much that he will come over to you and put his hands on your shoulder and he will tell you, no, you're not going to do that. You need to sit still. Oh, but God, no, 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 no. You need to sit there and, I, and, and, and God just stays in the slot until you learn to be still. Okay, that's, that's the training process. So con godly contentment brings great gain. Number six. Courage. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be mm. strong and courageous. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Amen. Praise God. Have I, have I not... 
command. Did everybody say command? command? This is an order. God commanded us to be courageous. He didn't say think about it. He didn't try to figure it out. He said just be. Courage is strength under control. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I do know that God's got his hands on my life. And, and God commanded, be strong and be of good courage. It's, it's interesting it says good courage because the opposite is bad courage, which is fear. Be strong and be of good courage. Do not be afraid. What's going on right now in 2023 and the past couple of years that our world is making everybody afraid. Yeah, remember a couple of years ago? I mean, driving down the freeway, you, you thought you were in twilight zone. There were no cars on the road. No one was in the parks. Everybody was afraid. It cracked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, so afraid that, you know, you had to hide your face with a mask. Yeah. I, I th one of the funny things about me, I don't get this. Everybody was so afraid that they had to go out and buy toilet paper. <laughs> huh? You know, I mean, it's just, just, just straight up dumb, okay? Yeah. So the, so the scripture says, in the last days, watch this, men's hearts will be overtaken because of fear. So a spirit of fear has come upon the world in the last days, but we have forgotten what God says. God says, oh, it's gone up there. Be, be of good courage. Uh, uh, trust me. And do not be afraid. Do not be fearful. Neither don't worry about it. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Man. Yeah. That's, saints, this is what the Word of God says. Pastor Gabe didn't say this. I just quoted what God said. So God has said that, that he's, he's putting us in a slot, and you need to know in your knower that you are going to make it. If things, somebody needs to hear this. I promise you, if you trust God, it's all going to work out. That what the devil has stolen from you, the Lord says, I shall restore to you the years that the locust has devoured. That's what the Bible says. I shall restore to you the years the locust has devoured. You are going to get your stuff back. You know that joy that you that you used to have? I'm telling you something, you're going to get it back. I know people that at one time had such an infectious laughter. I mean, you just love to be around them just to hear them laugh. But things happened, and all of a sudden they lost their laughter. And God's going to restore joy. Amen. So we're moving to the ABCs of man's concerns, but God has his answer for you. I don't know where you're at this morning. I mean, tonight. <laughs> I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're going to be at in the morning. Uh, yeah, but but listen, God, God, God wants you well. He, he wants you well. He wants you to sleep well tonight. You know, if I, if, I, if I can close up and tell you what I was talking on Sunday, we moved into some practical things. And people thought I was being funny, but I'm really not. I said, you're not sleeping well. Maybe it's time to get a new mattress. Maybe it's time to get a new pillow. Those are just natural things. You want to sleep well? Tell you what, don't, 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 don't go home and drink coffee after church tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, there, there, there are just some, some, some natural things that we can do to walk in the promises of God. Okay? Tell you, <coughs> you want to <coughs> quit coughing? <coughs> you might want to quit smoking. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah, we can go right on down the line. God has an answer for all our concerns. God wants you well. God wants you blessed. But it all starts with Christ being the central focus of our life. Come on, stand to your feet. Okay, we'll, we'll get them right after this. Thank you.
I don't know where you're at this morning. I mean, it's, wow. I'm, I'm, a, I'm already on Sunday. I don't, I don't know where you're at tonight. But if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you may know a lot about him, but you really don't know him as your Savior. Maybe you have known him and life kind of got in the way and you just got pulled away. You need to know that God is married to the backslider and God is constantly calling and wooing us back to himself. I want everybody in the house praying. Right, right where you're standing. Might not raise hands, you're saying, I need to get things straightened out between me and the Lord. I know God loves me, and I haven't really been where I need to be, but I need to get things straightened out between me and God. If that's where you're at tonight, by now raise hand. I just want to pray for you. Is there anyone in the house? Thank you. Thank you, Selena. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? All we have is the now. We don't have tomorrow. All we have is right now. Now is the appointed time. By now raise hand, you're saying the same thing that the Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And the response was to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans says, what the heart man believes with the mouth confessions are made unto salvation. I want to walk you through this right where you're standing. Matter of fact, let's, let's just kind of do this all together. Everyone just lift your hands up to God. That's saying I surrender. That's saying I surrender to God. I want you to make a verbal statement. I want, I want you to let it come out of your mouth. I want your ears to hear it. Because we want to solidify some things in Christ. I want you to say this with me. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I've missed the mark. I, I have need of a Savior. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And made a way for me to get to heaven. I denounce my past. I know I can't change it, but I have the now. So right now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. Give me a hunger for the... I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. I realize that I'm not worthy of it, but I thank you for your grace and your mercy. So I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Lord, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Praise God. God, you guys are still watching on social media. Thank you so much for being with us. Man. Tay, before, before we leave, uh, I, think, I think we got these pictures. If you get 